Hello, welcome to the Surf and River Report. Today we're at the Santa Barbara Small Boat Harbor discussing fishing with longtime local fisherman Mike McCorkle. Mike, how do you do? Glad to meet you. Same here. So you're still dealing with these natural seeps and you're doing okay as a fisherman today. We, yeah, you know what, fishermen here, as far as trawling, which I'm doing now, we lost 40% of our area, trawlable area, to oil development because they put the oil wells right where the fish are. And the way it, the way it turned out is that shrimp, there's three kinds of shrimp around here, and other fish like oil. Shrimp are right where the oil, here they, we catching shrimp, they come, there's oil, they put a platform right there. And they said, well, the shrimp are there because it's the platform, they come and live under it. Well, the shrimp were there before the platform was there. And so when they come in and they put these platforms, we lost that area. And we were guaranteed that when they take, get through and there's no more oil, they're gonna take the platforms out, clean up the bottom, and we can then go fish again. Well, that ain't gonna happen. Have they ever taken one out here? Yeah, they've taken out four, five, six, about seven of them. But the ones they took out four down here, they uh, they uh, promised they didn't clean up the bottom. There's big piles of shells, mussel shells, and debris and pipe and stuff, and they've left them. And it's been 14 years since they took them out, and they haven't done one thing about taking out the muscle piles. They can't make up their mind between the, the state, the, the enviros, the oil company, they're all arguing. In the meantime, we're stuck. They guaranteed we'll clean it up. They haven't. Now the other rigs, are, are their lifetime is coming near an end. They're talking about instead of taking them out, what they promised to do, of cutting them off 85 feet under the water and leaving them. That is bad, that's a giant booby trap. Somebody's gonna get tangled up in that. You'd hang up, you'd just, just yeah. stall, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. A sport fisherman, if he goes and tries to fish over there and gets his anchor caught in it or something and he's trying to pull it up on his little boat and it's choppy or something, he could get caught and pull him overboard, it could flip his boat over. But our idea is to take the chopped decks off and leave one deck, and that's the shade canopy, which the fish like and all the mussels and stuff that feed all this stuff is in the next level down, basically first 40 or 50 feet. They want to cut all that off, take it away. It's crazy. The artificial reef part of it is what they want to remove. Well, that's what's making a good reef, what I, from my experience of it, and they're going to take that away. And there's no studies that show, well, in the Gulf we do this and that. We're not in the Gulf, we're in California. Let's, let's make, if we're gonna make a reef, let's make a nice reef that has a lot of fish and has stuff that attracts fish. Well, the oil companies don't want that because they don't want the, the liability. They wanna walk away. They're gonna save a bunch of money. They're gonna promise some to different people. They're not promising any to us. They, they took away our 40%. Now, if it's, if it's 85 feet under the water, I'm gonna stay 10% further away from because I don't know where it is. Now, I can't see it anymore. It won't show up on a fish finder? Yeah, when you're right over <laughs> it, that's too late. When you're right over you it. Know? And we you're... have we have GPS that shows it, but you it's still, if you can see something, it's better than looking at some numbers or a picture here because the current's strong and we, we go right alongside of them. We know each rig, how close we can get to it. We know each rig, if there's sunken boring buoys on the bottom. There's sunken uh, pipes and stuff. We know where they all are. And the reason we know, we caught them all. And we've destroyed gear, but we know now, so we stay away. See? Because of that, you're not fishing next to the, anywhere, anywhere close to them. That would be well, a sports fish. Well, we go kind of close to them, yeah. We, we know what one we can get real close to and what one we can't get close to. Uh -huh. And we have, uh, GPS plotters on our boat. I've got a book that probably has a thousand snags in it in this channel. The numbers of Loran numbers. They just shut Loran off. The president said, oh, it costs $19 million. Shut it off. We don't need it anymore. We got GPS now. What if GPS breaks down? It's satellite. What if some country figures out how to scramble all those satellites? We have no uh, navigation aid for the for the United States, but we have all that, and so we we got 
it's kind of like, you know, you go out and go down this pier and you've got these dots and they're snags. And we basically were fishing like this out there. Can't just go and go straight, you know, or you're gonna, you're gonna catch something. And, and, uh, so for a commercial standpoint, the oil rigs are a double-edged sword. They provide for you some fishing, uh, but they also prevent you from some fishing. Right. If you're, you know, it depends what kind of gear you're using, and some you can go up real close and hook and line, and you could fish. For 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 what most commercial fishermen do, there's not enough fish under a rig to to provide, in other words, uh, a living. And the fish that live under there are basically juvenile fish, and we don't catch juvenile fish. We want to get some fish we can eat, bigger ones. Well, the best thing that we like about those rigs, they do produce small fish. Small fish come there and stay for a period of their life, and then they leave and go on somewhere else is the way I see it. And you need that, and you need, you need uh, they make really good landmarks. You go out there and you look around and you say, okay, that rig over there, now I know there's a, uh, something right over here, you line them up. If you, if you go down to Rincon Point and look up, you'll see they're on earthquake fault. They're all straight in a line. The oil rigs are on, on the earthquake fault. Yeah, it comes out of Rincon, there's a fault. And there's, there was five, now there's three, they took two up. They're all straight in a line. Then it turns and these four, they're all straight in a line. Oil's on earthquake faults. You're, they're drilling into the fault? I guess so. Wow. I mean, you know, oil all over the world, is that they find it on earthquake faults. It's a good place to find it. Okay. So that's when the, the earth moves, is, that's, is that good when they have a big earthquake? You know? For the Surf and River Report, this is Bill Rogers at the Santa Barbara Harbor. Okay, well, Thank you, good. Michael. Environmental impacts on our coastal communities have never been greater. From pollution to climate change, coastal communities are ground zero. The Surf and River Report brings you the latest developments impacting our coastal communities. We'll talk with experts on